you talk to many of our clients and many companies across the world, like they're having troubles with trouble with retention because people can move all over the place. People can be online, people can be in person and really, you know, companies are doing their best to, to see how they can make this environment something that people not only uh, are inspired to work on, but they're really looking forward to being at work and, and, and sharing in that community and mindfulness and meditation have, have been a really big part of that. Are you curious about discovering ways of making your life better? Then welcome to my podcast. I'm Bob Nickman, and this is The Exploding Human. Listen in while I talk with all kinds of people in the fields of personal growth, health and healing, alternative therapies, psychology, spirituality, environment, and the future. I'm looking for those answers that make life better for everyone. You'll meet cutting-edge practitioners, doctors, artists, filmmakers, business people, and those who have overcome challenges, the brave, the curious, anyone who is out there helping us humans to explore, expand, and explode. Hey, welcome to The Exploding Human. My name is Bob Nickman. My guest today is Spencer Delisle, and we're going to be talking about the World Cultural Festival, which is coming up at the National Mall in Washington, D.C., and his work with the Art of Living Foundation and their mission for world peace and a one-world family. But first, I'd like to invite you to visit my website, theexplodinghuman.com. Over there, you can listen to episodes, read synopses, see photos of my guests. There's a little bio on myself. There's also a YouTube channel where you can listen. That is The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman. As I said, my guest today is Spencer Delisle, and we're going to be talking about so many different things, uh, stress, meditation, silent retreats, spirituality, all these wonderful things that the Art of Living Foundation is all about. It's a nonprofit, which is putting on the World Cultural Festival. There's already 450,000 people registered for this festival in Washington, D.C. Pretty amazing, something I didn't really know about at all. And we're going to be talking about the various ways that um, he and his organization uh, helps people through stress reduction, mental health issues, and meditation and breath work. Spencer has dedicated the last 14 or 15 years of his life on this wonderful mission. And we talk about how he was kind of on a conventional path of success and corporate world and that kind of thing and feeling unfulfilled and how he segued into this whole new way of being. I'm going to let him tell you all about it. This is Spencer Delisle. Good afternoon, Spencer. I guess it's late in the day for you because you're on the East Coast and uh, I'm so happy to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Yeah, really looking forward to spending time with you. And yeah, I just want to recognize how much amazing work you're you're doing for so many people. You know, I think that when when things get tough and things get dark, you it's sometimes hard to find uh, you know, the light or even just a flashlight and and you're shining a lot of light in a lot of people. So I appreciate you for that. Well, I I love the shout out. You know, it's uh, I I do this because I I you know I I love the topics that I cover, and I like to get any kind of message out there. If I'm helping some people, that's great. You know, I've it's, and it helps me because I've discovered so much stuff I didn't know anything about. So we're gonna find out um, what you're up to these days. I know you're going to be hosting a uh, a conference. Is that what they call it? A festival. Tell us about that, and and then we'll go backwards to how you arrived at, at doing this. Yeah, for sure. So um, we have got this massive World Culture Festival. It's being put on by the Art of Living Foundation. So we're a, a not-for-profit, international not-for-profit. Um, our, our specialization is mental health, um, and we teach powerful techniques to – yeah, really eliminate stress and trauma from the system. So, so you can get back to that, that peaceful inner center of love and peace and joy. And which sometimes gets a little clouded, you know, from time to time when we go through, you know, difficult periods. And I mean, we were talking about it, you know, I think many of us have experienced um, the kind of divisiveness of these times and I think it's nice that you and I can get together and we can show another side. And that's really what the idea is, is to say, hey, um, we're, I think all of us are longing for like a little less stress and a little more connection after so much like isolation. Mm -hmm. And 
And that's the idea is that, you know, maybe we don't just have to tolerate each other. Why don't we celebrate our diversity and celebrate each other? And that's the whole idea to come together. And, you know, we may differ in opinion on certain things, but we can all celebrate culture. We can all enjoy great music, great dance, great food. We've got 85 food trucks that are going to come to the National Mall. Uh, and we're going to celebrate uh, this cultural extravaganza over three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, September 29th to October 1st. Uh, we just surpassed 500,000 uh, registered passes. So wow. we don't do things small in the art of living. So there's going to be a few few hundred thousand people there. And yeah, we really hope uh, everyone can join us. It's going to be a historic event and a lot of inspirational speakers from around the world. And hopefully you you can come and, and your viewers can join us. Yeah, we'd love to have you. So this is an interesting thing that you bring this up, that there's that many hundreds of thousands of people that are, that are going to be live and then there'll be some uh, online uh, registration, I'm, I'm assuming. That's exactly it. Okay. So we're going to have, you can uh, log on to wcf.artofliving.org to get your free pass to come in person. And then we're going to have a live stream uh, online. We expect about, uh, there's going to be TV there. So we expect about 20 million on TV and maybe uh, like the last one, we think we had over a billion uh, online. So it's wow. going to be widely well attended. And I don't know about you, but I feel that like when all of us people positive minded people that want to make a difference that, you know, uh, yearn for, you know, this, our vision is like a stress-free violence, free society. Um, it makes it an impact just to be together in the same vibe and that collective consciousness really makes a, a big difference. Um, so we're looking forward to it. Yeah. See, to me, uh, you said there's going to be TV there, but you know, why not, uh, I, I have seen no news stories about this. Nothing. It's not going to be on even on, you know, what you would call a liberal network. You know, CNN is not running ads. MSNBC, no, you know, not that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, or they're not covering like this is a big thing. A billion people are going to do this or, you know, yeah, uh, we're, they're expecting 200,000 people at the National Mall. I mean, if it was a, a protest against, you know, anything, there'd be trucks and cameras and all kinds of stuff and, and pe yeah. you know, news people and yeah. uh, people, you know, th making threats and throwing rocks and, you yeah. know, it'd be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so how, how backwards are things? It's just unbelievable. Here's this very yeah. uh, powerful and, and positive thing that is going to be happening at the end of the month um, and uh, no coverage, no nothing yeah it's a great point you know and i don't know about you i'd love to hear your thoughts on this too but like growing up i mean i i had a, i would say kind of the privilege of of not having like there weren't cell phones or anything like that when i was growing up it's like if you called someone and they weren't home you know if you called someone and they didn't answer it just meant they weren't home you know and and you, you know you would curse the people with the multiple zeros and the phone number with the rotary phone you know i don't know <laughs> remember that you know oh yeah and, very well yeah yeah I mean, you know, it, there. although maybe it's not as technologically advanced, I mean, you know, I felt almost like we had so much, a lot of freedom back then. And now, I don't know, back in the day, I remember, you know, I was so attracted to, you know, the Martin Luther Kings and, you know, the Mahatma Gandhis and, you know, the Rosa Parks and this kind of, we had like this pride in, in peace and, and nonviolence. And now I don't know with all the video games and, and the, and all it, like, there's the pride is almost shifted to this, like kind of, you know, aggression and, and violence. And it's, and, 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 and it's like the voice uh, of violence or or protest, like you were saying, and 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 aggression is so loud, and and attracts so much of the attention and the lights, and the idea, I guess, of this festival, you know, even though we may not be getting the attention just yet, is that we want to make the the voice of peace heard loud and clear. We want to make that voice of love of togetherness, you know, the the voice that's 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 even louder than, than those other voices. So let's see. I mean, we did a few interviews, but uh, hoping that uh, we'll get some more attention and maybe it'll just be organic attention of people sharing at the festival and, and beforehand. And uh, yeah, let's see great podcasts like this, getting the message out to, to more people. 
Yeah. So are you going to have uh, speakers and uh, workshops and, you know, all kinds of stuff, I guess. Yeah, that's it. So, um, so yeah, our focus is mental health. So we have a program called the art of living part one course where we teach uh, the principal technique is Sudarshan Kriya or sky breath meditation. It's a rhythmic breathing technique that it's, um, uh, Su means proper, darshan means vision, kriya is a purifying action. So through this rhythmic breathing, you wouldn't think just breathing, something we do every day, that the power of the breath has to really clear your mind, um, eliminate stress and baggage from the past, and even delink that emotion from that past memory. So maybe the memories still stick around. You remember the things from the past, but it doesn't have chains on you like it did. So, so yeah, we're going to be... Um, giving people opportunities to, to, to know more about that and experience the program um, as, as well as uh, show people some of the work, showcase some of the work we've done with veterans uh, with in, in the prisons in, in corporate uh, America and, and, and globally uh, humanitarian work. We work in the schools too. Um, so hopefully people will kind of see that okay there's there's a few more options out there to to popping a pill or, or what have you that that are, are really effective and, and maybe the, the the one of the solutions for your toolbox might might just be under your nose yeah i found that to be the case with myself i mean doing uh really i do yoga fairly regularly and that's got a lot of nice. you know breathing and postures and you know you're discharging all that negative energy and you know, when mm. your body feels good, your mind feels good. And I've done yeah, some, so, I, I did breath work. I know that you, I think you taught breath work, right? Isn't that something you, you or you still do maybe? Right. That's right. Yeah, I do. I teach uh, breath work. So the Sudarshan Kriya, the sky breath meditation, that's uh, that's sort of some breath work. We also teach different pranayama that helps direct the, the flow of the subtle flow of energy throughout the body, be able to increase the energy calm you down when you feel anxious um and then i also studied man i guess it's been about 20 years been studying yoga and the different branches of yoga um here in the states also in india in um in uh, in canada uh as well so it's been an amazing journey and uh my, my teacher uh shri shri ravi shankar uh guru dev shri shri ravi shankar he's actually the founder of the art of living uh, international, it could say, uh, ambassador of peace. He's actually solved uh, multiple conflicts in the world. Um, you know, he's a, a you could say, a, a master of meditation, uh, international thought leader. And I think one of the, you know, uh, most beautiful things, you know, he's brought is this is this vision of a stress free, violence free society and and a one world family, and and. The idea is that if we can, through these techniques, like you were sharing the yoga and the breathing meditation, if we can cultivate that peace within ourselves, it's kind of the, you know, the outer world is a reflection of the inner world. And if we can develop that peace in each one of us, it can reflect uh, in the world as well. A lot of the um, sort of simplified uh, uh, finger pointing and blaming and labeling and, and anger towards, you know, other people or organizations really speaks to an individual's personal unhappiness. Mm, they're looking, they're looking yeah, yeah. right. And they're looking outside themselves to like, if I can just get rid of this bad thing over there, then I'll feel mm, better. Well, mm, you're not going to feel better. You, that's not what's going to happen. You mm, might for a second, you might think, you're, you know, maybe a second, you know, right. But you're you're still going to be with you, and if you're somebody that's reacting in a in a harsh way, and and wants to be uh, whether it's just verbally violent or even physically violent, that isn't that comes from an inner disturbance that's very deep, and it's not the fault of other people. It's just not, and that, that taking that kind of responsibility is is something that a lot of people don't want to do, uh, because wow. it requires looking at yourself and it requires effort, a lot of effort and consistency. And, you know, this is the part a lot, a lot of people don't want, they don't want to look at the fact that their life's not really working the way they mm -hmm. want it to. That's a tough, especially the older you get, the, the harder that is to, to see. 
of course, that's where the freedom comes from. But the, you know, I guess the fear would be if I look at it and it's not solved, I'm really screwed. Now I got nothing. Or if wow. I start crying, I'll never stop. That's a, the other. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I identify with that too. It's like, we were just talking at those darker moments of my life, you know, when I was feeling a lot of despair, I just thought, I remember I would just, you know, kind of resist everything and try to push away the emotions or, you know, go in the fridge and I'll just, I'll, I'll have one brownie and then I'll think, Oh, well, I do such a small one. Let me have another one. Let me drown (laughs) my feelings out. So I don't feel it and or resisting no i don't want to feel that and it's like there's this law of the mind that like whatever you resist persists and the more you resist the emotion or the thought it's like it gets even worse yeah so i really i yeah identify with what you're saying there and and it's scary it's you think oh wow if i start crying will i ever stop yeah or will i just stay that way and it's so i remember just being in that state and just thinking like i don't want to find out I don't think I have courage <laughs> to find out about that, you know? Well, and, that's, you know, I mean, cause that, that really is an ongoing uh, amount of suffering that's un- unnecessary. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, what do they say? Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional, but it's an option that yeah. you're choosing without even really realizing it because of the fear of having to look at stuff. Yeah. And I know for me too, like, um, I think there's many kind of roads to Rome in a sense, you know, many different tools we can use and different kind of tools in our tool belt. And um, yeah, I I was noticing that um, the thing I, I really fell in love with and worked for me really well with this sky breath meditation, the art of living part one course uh, was that, you know, it was something I could do where in one sense at the place I was at, uh, I was noticing that when I was talking about things, it was good. I felt some relief, but then in another sense, it was kind of just bringing up other things. And I got in these vicious cycles. And the one thing I liked about it is that I was able to just release it, uh, without having to do anything kind of like, um, you know, when you take your garbage out at the end of the week, you know, you, uh, you don't necessarily have to look at everything in there and say, okay, that's the sandwich I ate on Tuesday. You know, that's the, uh, yeah. you know, uh, avocado toast from breakfast. Uh, you know, you just like, like, that's the thing I like, I love about sky breath meditation, Sudarshan Kriya is that it's like, no, you just tie it all up and you throw it out. And, and in, in that way, it was very effortless. Like you just have to sit there, breathe, feel the release. And, and in that kind of sacred space where, you know, we kind of play with the Las Vegas rules during the course, right? Like what happens in the course stays in the course kind of thing. <laughs> uh, and, and in that trusting environment, you know, you can let go, you can cry, you can laugh, you can just, you know, whatever happens is okay. And I got to tell you, like with that environment gave me so much freedom that then not only became like a practice on the course, but something that I could trust more in just being with those emotions, you know, being able to observe an emotion rather than being scared of it and resisting it. And then, you know, that's the beauty is that what I found is that when you observe these emotions, they even can transform. They can even transform into peace or maybe joy, just simply being with that emotion is so is so powerful too. Um, we have these silent meditation retreats and, and that's part of what we do is, is meditating and just observing the emotion, being with it, observing the changes. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful practice. How many days are you silent? That's a good question. Uh, it varies. The first, the first kind of introduction we do, it's really three days uh, of silence. It's a long um, time not to stop. That's it. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah, it's like somebody's okay, talking how- though. Are there people guiding meditation? So they're talking. Exactly. Yeah, okay. somebody is talking. Yeah, I, I remember for the first time when I heard of these silent retreats, I thought to myself, you know what? There's no way. There's no way. I could sit there with my, how busy my mind is like, that is the ultimate torture. 
And you know what? It's interesting. I remember the last day of the program when I kind of like forced myself to do it. Um, and it wasn't a cakewalk. Like it, 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 um, we have different techniques and practices that help settle the mind down. So actually you can go into silence. It's not like you just get on the course and okay, you know, mom's the word, you know, like <laughs> you, yeah. you go through processes of actually expression, different processes, different interactions. And actually at the end of those processes, it's like, okay, it's enough. I'm ready to, to be more silent. Um, and then at the end of the course, I remember thinking to myself, you know, my mind was just so still. It was, it was one of the first times I had had that kind of extended stillness other than after the sky breath meditation where my mind was so still, like almost like, I don't know if you've ever been to a lake in a cottage or in the country early in the morning, maybe camping or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's heaven. Yeah. It's just so still. And, you know, you don't even want to put a pebble in there because it's just so pristine, you know, and my mind was kind of like that. And I didn't even want to say one word. It was so beautiful. So what a transition, you know, being in this place where I said, you know, there's no way I'll do that to now when the teacher at the end of the course, I'll, 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 I'll give you a little secret. At the end of the course, we ask each participant, like, you know, what's the first word you'd like to say out of silence to break your silence? And I didn't want to say a word, actually. But my first word is, eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's part of the path, too, is just is laughter and fun. That's okay. I mean, you can laugh, right? You can make those sounds. You can, oh yeah. I mean, that is part of the release. That's part of the, that's part of the journey. And I mean, that's the, I don't know. That's one of the things I love about the art of living is that it's, there's such a variety of things. Like I think some paths have very deep silence and meditation. Amazing. But you're, I mean, you know, some saints, you like, you would never see them laughing like that would just never happen. Right. And then you have others that are, you know, in complete ecstasy and dance. And then you have others that are in deep wisdom, others that, you know, are in service. And, and I mean, the thing I really love about art of living, many other people do, I mean, you know, 500 million lives touched uh, is, is this variety that's there, you know, and, and that's me. Like I feel human beings have such a multi-dimensional aspect to each person and, and I, I really appreciate that every aspect gets gets a chance to express, you know, including like laughter, a lot of laughter. And I don't know if you ever had a chance to to listen to any Guru Dev Sri Sri Ravi Shankar's videos, but I mean, he he is Mister Mister Humor. Like it, it's both. I find it's like that that combination of deep wisdom that touches your heart like nothing else, and at the same time fun laughter yeah. humor you know well yeah and there has to be because you know yeah it, it's if you've got seriousness you have to have the other side one can't exist that's without it. the other it's impossible you know light that's it. light wouldn't exist if there wasn't dark and vice versa the other side of it is that when you're at least for me i'm i see uh irony and dichotomy and opposites in in almost everything so yeah that's pretty damn funny most of the time you know it's just um that's a that to me is, is very real if you're not seeing that you're not completely looking at something from different angles no that's one of the kind of sutras of wisdom from guru dev sri sri Ravi shankar uh that what you just said you know like light and dark and 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 you know moments of calm and and intensity and depth and then moments of levity and and laughter yeah and it's like if you didn't have one you couldn't have the other actually you know how can you have the how could we know the value and the ecstasy of these good times if you never experienced a tough time you know it's like i have a nephew he's like you know he just turned uh six and I remember, you know, if you ask him, you know, you want to, would you like peace of mind or peace of cake? Like, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty obvious, you know, he's going to go for the cake and he's going to not just eat it with a spoon. Like it's going in with his hands. It's all over his face. You know, he's just fully enjoying that moment. Yeah. 
And why does he go for that? Well, I think, you know, maybe he hasn't experienced the kind of, you know, the struggles that we have, you know, and, and maybe the appreciation for that peace of mind, I don't know, may not be as much, you know, being a happy kind of uh, kid, you know, really young. Yeah, um, well, he's already, so, yeah. close, he's already, he's only six years away f- uh, from, you know, being um, born, which hopefully when you're yeah. born, I think you probably are very, um, it's some sort of a connection to where you come from. That's a little bit stronger yeah. that gets kind yeah. of uh, chipped away at as you, as you get socialized. I don't know. Maybe that's the reason why, you know, babies and, you know, many of us love babies so much, you know, they're so full of joy, you know, yeah. and I don't know, I remember re- reading a study somewhere that, you know, babies, you know, smile, I don't know how many thousand times a day. And then, you know, the kids smile this many times and then even less and then like adolescents even less and then adults kind of hardly ever at all. And um, yeah, it's nice. Uh, Guru Devi says, uh, it's a nice quote. He says, um, you know, make your smile cheap and your anger expensive. Mm, I, I like that. that. Yeah, I like that. I think, you know, sometimes if you smile too much, you get locked up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something's wrong with that guy. He's smiling too much. You know, in a world where there's many, you know, kind of frustrated and angry people, you know, the 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 guy that can laugh is maybe seen as the nut job, right? So yeah. so maybe we need a few more nut jobs out there to to kind of help people, you know, realize that, you know, we can also let go and, and there's more to life than just this mundane existence. You know, we, we don't have to just kind of tolerate life and we don't just have to kind of struggle. Life doesn't have to be a struggle. It can be a celebration. Yeah. I was just thinking about the silent, uh, the silence over X number of days that one of the things that would um, come up maybe is that not only are you not talking, but you are forced to listen in a way that yes. is not, you know, because a lot of times in, a, you know, here's the question, are you really listening or are you just getting ready to talk? Mm. And that, that is, you know, and I'm guilty of that to, as much as anyone. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes when I'm doing this uh, podcast, I am in that mode because I have to carry this quote interview. But then yeah. there's been times and, you know, and I don't think I'm doing much of that right now, but because I think this is a, you know, a connected conversation. Mm. But sometimes I've been so engaged in what the person is saying that I forget to that I'm in the middle of an interview and I need to come yeah, up yeah. Thing. Yeah. and I'll just and sometimes I'll just say it I go I'm sorry I got nothing I was just so engaged in what you were saying <laughs> wow wow uh, so that would I think would come up at, at something like that it's just like well I'm you know uh, not only do I want to talk and I can't am I does that switch me to this place where I'm either listening to the person who's facilitating whatever's going on or am I listening to the sounds of nature or am I listening to the silence in the room that I'm in? What is actually, what What are the things that are happening in those situations? I find that really interesting. I've never done a silent uh, retreat. Uh, mm. Although I'd probably be good at it. Uh, I think I, th- I, you know, I don't know what would come up, but you know, I can go very long periods of time without talking and I'm fine with it. I don't feel much of a need to, to say that much anymore <laughs> or, as, or as much as I used to actually, you know, I, I, I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, I just, I, I got nothing to say. It's all, I've said it wow. all. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that was just that day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, there's a lot of beauty in that too. You know, just having the mind so settled. I mean, you know, many of the sages say that the purpose of words is to create silence. Well, you know, they talk about that a lot of times in in music. That um, you know, the 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 silence between the notes is equally as important. And you know, when we talk about uh, certain types of music, that if the the if you can do the same thing with less business and get the same effect that's the way to go in terms of any kind yeah. of art or communication. 
And mm. you know, a lot of times they'll talk about um, implied melody, which would be there's a melody going on, but it isn't so overt that every note is, mm. is hit, hit, hit. This is the melody, you know, that mm. because the sparseness of it, 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 there's some of it that's implied. And that's sort of like how poetry works. And, you know, I think painting, all that kind of stuff kind of speaks to that that idea of um, the thing that's not there is is, mm. is 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 equally important, if not more, than the thing that is there, which is just a framework. It's not the it's mm. not the thing. Yeah, that's know, right. It's a little esoteric, but why not? No, I, I would say exactly that, and I mean, I'll I'll share with you a little bit about me. Like, you know, I say a prayer, you know, every morning that I can just be, you know, kind of get out of my own way. And, and I think that each one of us has, you know, a very unique song that's, 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 that's to be sung and whatever that, you know, the special til- skills and talents that are there to be expressed, you know, from that, from that space of peace and love and joy that is that, you know, that is this, this self, you know, that essence of who we are. And each one of us is unique and each one of us has so much to give and so many of these special talents to, to share with the world. I mean, that's how I feel is like, it's, it's part of the, I think the reason we're here. And I think a lot of the time, you know, we kind of get in our own way, you know, so to speak and, and, you know, with our overthinking and, and, and all of this stuff. And, and if we can just like, I, I, I know for me that started off like my meditation originally was with sports. So I played basketball growing up and I got in these moments where, you know, they call it the zone or the flow where, you know, I'm not thinking about anything. Actually, it feels like I'm watching everything happening. It's, it's just a happening, you know, I feel like I'm not even doing anything and it's all flowing. The passes are being made. I'm making the shots. The basket looks like it's this, it's, it's huge. Uh, and, and, and then there are those other days, right. Where it feels like the basket is the size of, you know, I don't know the, the gym and the, and the, the, you know, or the, or the basket is the size of a pebble and the, and the ball is the size of the gym and, and things can't go right. And I, and I feel that, you know, any practices, and I feel that's one of the main things about Sudarshan Kriya, sky breath meditation, is that it helps you just like get out of your own way and, and flow. And, and especially with regular practice, um, more and more, I start to realize that, wow, that, that unique song I have to sing is being sung more and more. And I'm, I'm not pulling, you know, the cord out of my mic and I'm not, you know, covering my own mouth, you know what I mean? And, and I, that's what really inspires me is, and that's what I've dedicated my life to uh, over the past 15 years, um, is really sharing that with more and more people. And, um, I mean, I, I imagine you being a, you know, stand up comedian and, and you've had moments like that too. Absolutely. It's like music when it's working. It's just like mm. playing music. It's incredible. And then, then there's the times when you're actually uh, in in the uh, flow of what you're, you know, what you're talking about, and you start thinking about I'm in the flow, and you lose it. You lose it very quickly. Yeah, as, soon it. As, you, yeah. as soon as you become aware that that's what you're doing, it's gone. That's it. It's yeah. Nice cruel yeah. joke. Nice cruel. It's joke. a cruel joke. <laughs> it's a cruel joke, and oh, dear, it's hilarious. Do that. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. It's like, well, the universe can have its fun, can it, Bob? I, I suppose. Too, yeah, yeah. I this suppose. guy's just doing too well right now. Let's just tell you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he needs a good lesson. I was very curious that I it's I saw that you did some of this work with, and I'll just pick one of them. Some corporations, like major uh-huh. corporations. Um, correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have. We work a lot of corporations around yeah, the world. So yeah, so I like I'm just I I'm kind of like I never picture the corp the corporations, uh, you know, fairly large corporations, even one being aware of it and two wanting to to do that and yeah, uh, not being resistant to it. Tell me how that sort of happens and what are what is some of the resistance that you get when you go in? I mean, are are people required? 
to uh, to to do this and you know or if they're not I'm sure they're a little bit more receptive because they're curious uh, and what are some of the effects that you've had can yeah I mean if you have some examples or you don't have to sure. name an exact corporation unless you want to yeah for sure yeah so I think you're right I think if we would have gone back like 20 years ago like when I started on this path you know I think there was just a handful of companies that were interested in this kind of thing because they thought, okay, no, well, you know, the general consensus is that like, no, I'm paying, you know, we're paying you, you're here to work. So, you know, that, you know, what's the issue, you know, just do it kind of, kind of, yeah. kind of thing. No, I mean, and, and that's uh, legit. I suppose it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a little limiting, but it's, it's, I get it. It makes complete sense. And from that yeah. making money mentality, it's like totally makes sense. It's logical. There you go. It, it totally makes sense. And I mean, the, the, the crazy thing is that, you know, if you do a, you know, a, a, a kind of a, a cake of your life, you know, you'd be surprised how much of our time we actually spend at work. I mean, actually it's the majority of our life, which yeah. is wild, you know? So I think that, you know, after so much research has come out about the benefits, you know, meditation, the benefits of the breath, the, the productivity and the, and the, and the benefits to the bottom line of, you know, of mindfulness, of meditation, of taking care of your employees, you know, of having a, a happy, uh, employee, a happy employee is a productive employee is an innovative employee. Uh, you think of all those great, you know, scientists of the past, like, like the ideas didn't necessarily come in, in the lab. They came in a moment of self-reflection or like, you know, in, in the shower or, or, or walking in the woods or something like that, you know, where, where the mind became quiet and allowed for this space uh, of creativity and emotion uh, and, and innovation. And I think that, you know, many companies have tuned into that and now it's, it's really become, um, you know, kind of a way that people are deciding to stay or move from a company. Now, now, I mean, if you talk to many of our clients and many companies across the world, like they're having troubles with trouble with retention because people can move all over the place. People can be online, people can be in person and really, you know, companies are doing their best to, to see how they can make this environment something that people not only uh, are inspired to work on, but they're really looking forward to being at work and, and, and sharing in that community and mindfulness and meditation have, have been a really big part of that. I'm just curious about when you're doing um, a workshop with somebody, I, I'm interested in the resistance part of it. I want I, I'm, the resistance. I, 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 I'm looking for that. a story yeah. of somebody who had a yeah. breakthrough, who was super resistant. I don't know. If yeah. I, we can talk have about one. that. I, I want to, I want to hear that. I love that kind of stuff. Like, fuck you. I hate this shit. This is. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So, so we taught a a course at like, um, I would say it's probably like the top, like 20 in terms of like the biggest companies in the world. Uh, It's based in the U S and they, one of their top executives, um, was, you know, very happy for, you know, his team and his managers and his directors and his vice presidents to to do the course, but there was no way that he was going to do it. Oh, okay. You know, there you go. You know, yeah. you kind of rules for thee, but not for me, you know, yeah, kind sure. of, kind okay. of he, thing. You well, know? He's the top guy. He doesn't need it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Exactly. I wouldn't uh, be the so, top guy if I needed something else other than what yeah, I have because I did it all myself. Hey. There you go. I'll tell you, there's a silent epidemic even now, and that is of mental health in the C-suite. Because the, the issue is that even if these guys would are, are burning out, and they are, these women and these men, they're burning out like crazy. Uh, they're, they've got to be seen as these energizer bunnies, um, but you know they can't admit that they're having a challenge because if they do... Oh, well, shareholders are going to get cold feet. People are not going to have confidence and their career is over. So it's this dilemma. Like you have people on both sides of that spectrum and in between as well. So this person was really resistant and it was interesting because, um, 
he actually uh, ended up having a heart attack. And let's just say that this guy was in his late 40s, so a pretty young guy, pretty young leader. And and he, uh, the doctor told him, listen, you know, uh, you either quit this company or there's another alternative. And, you know, that alternative was was basically to to be six feet under kind of thing, you know, and and he had a, he had a, a young daughter. And, you know, I almost like, you know, of course, like everyone, you know, you want to grow, grow up to see your kids grow up and you want to you want to grow old with them, see the grandkids. And and so that motivated him. And he said, OK, well, I'm not going to quit this company but I'm going to take your course. And, and by the end of the course, I mean, you should have seen him. Like he, he told us that, you know, um, he told us that like he had never felt the freedom he felt and the peace of mind he felt and the energy since he was in grade school as a kid. So this guy that went from, you know, very stern leader, you know, not show anything became, you know, much more open, much more receptive. And actually, in the end, from being a person that was so resistant to this kind of thing, um, actually was delivering more and kind of had the attention and the connection with his team. I think that he was longing for before, but couldn't seem to really figure it out. You know, it became that, uh, you know, instead of being this kind of leadership by position, he he became more and more one of those true leaders that doesn't lead by position, but just leads by the sheer, you know, desire to help others and, and, and kind of be this servant leader for his team. So yeah, thinking back in terms of a transformation, I, I think that was one of the biggest ones. And, uh, and and he went from resisting the course to now kind of you know dragging people to to the course after that. So a, I love uh, that story. That is that is an amazing thing. And I was just wondering what uh, transpired in that young boy's life. Well, maybe it wasn't a, maybe it wasn't a single event. Maybe, but to for him to have this belief system. That was thoroughly in place. It sounds like, and I don't know the guy, obviously, but mm. he had. I think he had a belief system that said, "You have to be a serious, uh, super focused, no nonsense, go getting person in order to get from A to B, and that B is the ultimate in happiness, which is money and success." So, and, and I think it's a very common thing. It's like um, the whole educational system is balanced uh, on the head of a pin when you think, and, and, and maybe this happened in his home or schools, but the, like, this is my sort of beef with the belief system about education, that if you get good mm -hmm. grades, you get into a good college. Okay. You work mm -hmm. hard, you get into a good college, you get into a good college, then you get a good job. And then you rise in that job because you're doing the same exact sort of tasks that got you to the good college. And then you're making a ton of money. And then, and here's where it's all off. You're happy. That mm. if you do all this stuff, that it's going to lead to some sort of contentment and fulfillment and happiness. Mm -hmm. And that is, that has sent so many people off the cliff because there's no oh, yeah. balance in any of that. Um, and it's, yeah. and that whole system, which is based on fear, if you don't do it, you're going to be unhappy. And, mm -hmm. and this false premise that those things lead to something that's, you know, now I'm not saying hard work and accomplishment isn't worthwhile because obviously it is, but if it's not, if it's not in tandem with the person evolving in some way and, and understanding what actually there's, there's a lot of ways to be successful. Let's put it that way. Money and, and prestige and all that stuff is one way, but are you successful emotionally? Are you successful spiritually? Are you successful in terms of service to other people? Are you, 
are you successful mentally where you feel like okay and you're not you're not churning and troubled and stressed and 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 you know the schools don't talk about this stuff it's it, it's i guess maybe in some religious uh, institutions they they touch on it i i don't know those seem to be separate. Those are weekend things that you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm generalizing, of course. And, and there's people that are able to do, you know, have a great balance. But, you know, this guy, you know, I, and I'm assuming that in these this course that the belief systems are examined. Because I that that to me is the because everything if everything begins with a thought which it does all your actions start with oh I'd like to go over here now and I'd like to eat right. that I'd like to talk to that person you thought it before you did it so yeah. if everything begins with a thought and you change you know you lower the stress level with you know these types of uh, breathing or whatever mm -hmm. you do and then when that starts to change your thoughts and then you can then you can actually manage your thoughts in a way that they don't take you to where this guy had a, had a heart attack, yeah, tremendous success, sense, yeah. every, everything in place, this, this, this boom. Yeah. That was quite a little speech on my part, wasn't it? <laughs> I think it's uh, I think we can all identify with that, you know, cause that's kind of like the, the formula and I don't know about you, but that is one of the things that, uh, you know, that was kind of my path too, you know, like I, I was building my way up from education to to you know working in the in the biochemical kind of biomedical field and um you know making some progress in my career and then and then you know all these things that I thought would bring me so much happiness and yeah. so much joy it just like there was no joy there you know that juice of life that that I enjoyed so much as a kid I just felt it was like you know kind of drained out of me and yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's you know, it's, it is, it is, and it's a tough, it's a tough gauntlet to 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 get through. And there's a lot of things to dodge, you know. And yeah. you know, I went, I went the route of, you know, I knew instinctively on some level that I wasn't going to find anything worthwhile within that sort of laid out kind of uh, mm -hmm. conventional path. But I didn't know what else there was. Right. Yeah. So I so I picked yeah. getting high and drunk uh, because yeah. at least that felt good. Yeah. Um it wasn't a, the healthiest choice, but then again, it was a very powerful survival tool that served me very well until it didn't. <laughs> wow. <laughs> then it really didn't, but um, wow. so I I don't I don't have any regrets about um you know, doing things that maybe were self-destructive because they were at the time I didn't know any better and they were survival tools. And that's, I think that's the way to look at that kind of stuff. It's like, thank you for helping me survive a situation. I will no longer be needing your services is how I, <laughs> yeah. it's just like, I'm done with that now. I appreciate that time. <laughs> yeah. I, and I think it's cool too, because like now, you know, you have a totally different frame of reference that you can speak to people from that are struggling and say, Hey, I've been there, you know, and that makes a difference for people that are going through a tough time. Oh yeah. You trust, you trust somebody that understands where you're True. at. You, you definitely, there's a trust level that you can't get from somebody just talking down or, you know, from the side. Yeah. Like we do courses with, uh, with veterans as well. And many of our vet, uh, that instructors uh, are vets themselves and, yeah. and, you know, they've experienced these things and, um, and, and our courses, like, you know, if, even if the, the instructor is not a vet, um, you know, they've, they have a lot of experience with teaching vets and the courses are, are, are just vets, you know, so, so that camaraderie, that um, understanding of what each person has gone through, like you said, you know, I mean, uh, the currency of connection and uh, is trust and, and really it, it, it's, it's needed for people to be able to open up and, and for, for people to be able to have that kind of change. So um, yeah, I really identify with what you were saying there. And that's what we've seen with the vets courses and the prison courses too. Uh, and even the, the corporate courses, it's like, even the kids courses, it's like, that's why we do the courses for different communities because the needs and the approach 
needs to be very different depending on yeah. who you're working with, you know? Well, I appreciate all the work you're doing. Why don't you um, talk about, uh, before we go, uh, I could do, I could talk like nine hours, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. It's been so nice. <laughs> but talk, talk about, uh, or like, let, let the folks know about the, uh, the uh, what's coming up in Washington. Uh, and so they can, uh, they can plug in and find out more if they want to. Yeah, wonderful. So, so I've been here, I'm from Toronto, Canada, I've been here in DC since mid July. And, uh, you know, we are ready to light this candle on this incredibly historic event that is going to be taking place September 29th to October 1st, uh, we've reserved actually the entire National Mall from the Capitol building all the way to the monument. So I don't know if you've ever been down there, but it is a massive space. I've only seen and, the pictures. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so so we are going to have um, musicians. We are going to have uh, singers. We are going to have dance performances uh, from around the world. 17,000 artists uh, from uh, like about 100 uh, countries. Um, we're going to have participants coming from 180 countries. Um, we've got just over 500,000 passes registered. And yeah, the idea is that, you know, uh, the art of living, our, our dream is of a stress-free, violence-free society. So we, we we certainly, we do, we don't do things small in the art of living. <laughs> we do things big and, and, and we got our work cut out for us uh, on that one. And, and we really feel like we, we need to join hands to make that happen, to make the voice of, of peace heard loud and clear. And that's what we want to do is come together and, and celebrate life, celebrate diversity, and and really show the world that you know we may differ on 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 certain things, but but we are a one world family and realize that vision together. It's going to be a historic event. We're going to do a massive group meditation, hundreds of thousands of people in person. We're going to have a billion between TV and online. And it is going to be a remarkable event. WCF.artofliving.org. You can get your free pass. So you don't have to pay anything for it. Come down to DC, experience it in person, experience it on, on our live broadcast. Uh, and, and we would be overjoyed to, to have you. We're going to have speakers, inspiring speakers from heads of state to government leaders, to NGOs, to thought leaders. It's, it's going to be a remarkable event and we just don't want anyone to miss out. So, so really hope, uh, that, that you can all join us. Well, I'm going to go to the website and uh, register. So, uh... Amazing. You'll, maybe you'll see me there. You'll be hosting. That's it. I'll be one of the MCs. So you still, so you'll have one, one of many friendly faces there. Uh, okay. See what we can do together. You know, I think uh, that's the invitation. We don't want to, we don't want anyone to miss out and, and we need you. We need you to be there to, to, to share and, and make sure that that voice of peace is heard loud and clear. So, so come join us on the, on the 29th. Well, thanks so much for your time. I loved talking to you. What a what a great afternoon for me. And uh, keep up the great work. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, Bob. And yeah, thanks for the opportunity. And same here. Thanks, Spencer. Bye. Thanks, Bob. Much appreciation for you folks listening to The Exploding Human. The website is theexplodinghuman.com. The YouTube channel is The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman. Once again, I want to thank Spencer Delisle for being on the show. And please attend the World Cultural Festival. You can find out more information online. I will put a link in the description. Have a fantastic day.